Welcome back to Kettlebells and Cocktails and another edition of the Weekly Buzz. As always, we are joined by Joe Jenatin Palawa, who's the managing editor of The Morning Chalk Up. How's it going, Joe? Great, Nikki. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Always look forward to our chats every week. If this is your first time listening to The Weekly Buzz, as a reminder, this is our partnership with The Morning Chalk Up, where we discuss some of the latest and greatest headlines in the CrossFit world, everything from the competition side of things to the affiliate and community side of things. And Joe is our window into the news. So Joe, let's start with the competition side of things because we are gearing up for a very exciting weekend here, aren't we? 100%. So big week, heading into the Rogue Invitational. So who's going to take the Rogue Invitational? <laughs> this is the big story. Who are we looking at to really you. make a run for the podium? Oof. Well, I mean, I could make, I truly could make a case for like half of the athletes that are well, let's, competing on both sides. Well, let's start on the men's side. Obviously, I think all eyes are going to be on the Adler Krennikov um, mm -hmm. rivalry, such that there is one. I don't know if we're calling it a rivalry yet, but there was yeah. obviously some smack talk happening in the off season or following the games. This is going to be Krenikov's first time back in competition after the games with his foot injury. So we'll be able to see how he's doing there. Two big, strong guys in a competition that's going to favor big, strong guys. And so that's going to be fun to watch. Also, Ricky Garrard coming back for, for the first time from his shoulder yeah. injury in the offseason. So you got to give him a shot at the podium. Same thing, Pat Vellner. Right. He was taken second at Rogue in person twice and first in the online version of the Rogue Invitational during the pandemic. And especially, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, but they released the workouts and one of them is a one rep max deadlift test. And you got to be looking at Valner for a big lift there. For sure. <clears throat> so those are, those are, those are who, who I want to see. Adler, Krenikoff, Gerard, and Valner on the men's side. Plus, we've got some dark horses, too. Chandler Smith had a great games and then followed that up with a great showing with Noah Olsen in Madrid. So we'll definitely keep an eye on Chandler Smith, who's he's also done great at Rogue in the past. Brent Fakowski, can't count him out when he is in the field. And although basically all I've talked about so far, all we've talked about are Canadians, Americans and one Australian, there are Europeans in the field. BKG and Lazar Jukic, both, we could look to them for great performances as well. Yeah, both of them are super consistent, too. So you can't, you really can't count them out. Oop, super stacked yeah. on the men's side. What about over on the women's side? Well, you and I have talked about this a few times, but we're going to be watching T. Claire Toomey Orr and Laura Horvath. Tia, of course, we've talked about it ad nauseum at this point, but her first time back after her pregnancy and childbirth, five months five months after and so we're going to see what kind of form she is in coming in Laura Horvath coming off the big win at the games and so everybody is really looking forward to seeing these two women throw down also though want to keep an eye on the other women who have podiumed in the past at Rogue um, Gabby Magawa Emma Lawson on the dark horse side of things Ariel Lowen um, oh yeah third place at the games Competing close to home, I believe she was 10th at Rogue last year. Alex Gazan, great mm -hmm. uh, performance at the games, fifth place, and just a couple of points out of fourth place. And then Daniel Brandon, of course, especially if there's any, any handstand walking, handstand obstacles, you have to keep an eye on her. And she was ninth last year at Rogue as well. Dang, okay. So those are the, so the, those are the men and women that, that, that we're keeping an eye on. I think it's shaping up to be a great competition. Truly, it could go to anyone at this point. Both sides of the competition are stacked. And that is a great segue to talk about the workouts that have just been announced literally yeah. moments ago before we started recording by the Rogue Invitational for the CrossFit competition. So the, the one thing that stands out to me is there are a lot of new and cool implements that are going always. to be used. Always, always. always sure. Sure. But just looking down the list, they haven't announced all of the workouts yet, but there's uh, event three is called the Circus, which is going to include a big strongman dumbbell, 100 pounds for the men, 100 pounds for the women. I'm sorry, 70 pounds for the women. So I'm imagining the big the big circus dumbbell, right, with the with the big bells on each side and then the fatter grip 
Yeah. Uh, there. I hope and, everyone is wearing a red and white striped unitard for that one, too. <laughs> Must be. That'll be great. Curly mustaches for everyone. And there's also an implement in that workout called the Killer Cage, which I'm not sure what it is, but I want to know. Uh, and I'm excited <laughs> to see watch it. it. <laughs> I will watch it to find out for uh, sure. My guess is it's probably something yoke because it says Killer Cage down and back. So something maybe yoke like there. Another cool implement that I wanted to highlight is the fat bell. So they're going to be doing double fat bell ground overhead. And imagine a kettlebell without the horn around the top, but instead a handle down in the middle. Uh, Oh, weird. Yeah. And so they're going to be doing double fat bell ground overhead with 70 pound fat bells for men, 53 pound fat bells for women. That's going to be in a workout called Hulk hands, which you can imagine may have some grip fatigue involved i would say just the thought of of holding a a bell along those lines already makes my hands tired so and there's also the hill will be back great so in the outfield of the diamond so there's a hill run on the schedule and everybody's favorite one rep max deadlift yes event number six it on can't wait one rep max deadlift so a lot of great stuff We're really pumped for this weekend. We're going to be publishing all weekend long. The Morning Chalk Up will have extra newsletters out on Saturday and Sunday, bringing you all the action that we can from the Rogue Invitational. Joe, you don't need to sleep. That's fine. (laughs) Bring us the news. It's what we need. Give the people what they need. No, that's great. And thank you guys for putting in the extra effort because if you you can't make it to all of the coverage on the live stream, then you'll definitely want to catch up with what MCU is working on so you can get all of the latest and greatest news. Okay, Rogue's not the only thing going on. Tell me about uh, what else is happening in the competition world right now. Yeah, let's just do a couple of quick hitters. Uh, Dubai today revealed some more athletes on there in their field. So far, by my count, they have announced seven women and eight men, all Europeans at this point. We're going to hold, you and I are going to hold off on talking about those until we get a little fuller picture. And I don't know about you, but I'm not the best multitasker. So we're going to go one event at a time, all yep. eyes on Rogue. Now we'll yep. shift to Dubai after that. That um, makes sense. Just as a reminder, Joe, Dubai is all invitational this year, right? No one has to keep an eye on a qualifier or anything like that. Yes. Yes. That okay. is one change that they made this year. It is all invitations. And I don't know the full number of invitations on each side but as i mentioned we've got 18 total athletes who have been announced so far cool yeah and then let's take a look at another professional sport with a major crossfit crossover this week tyson bajan made a splash in the nfl his first professional start as qb for the chicago bears his dad owns a crossfit affiliate And notably for the CrossFit world, earlier last week in a press conference at the podium, he said that his backup plan, if he wasn't a professional football player, he would just be CrossFitting his life away and (laughs) getting as jacked as possible while teaching at his local high school. He was a Division II quarterback at Shepard University. He set a career touchdown record for the NCAA with 159 touchdowns, but went undrafted and got picked up through free agency. Just a little bit on his stats for the first game. Uh, Threw for 162 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. So that is a passer rating of 97.2. Pretty solid, smart, tight start for the 20, I believe, 23-year-old, 22 or 23-year-old. And the Bears won the game. First time winning at home for like over a year. So Wow. Oh, my gosh. This is so Great. It's so fun. I love I love the CrossFit crossovers. I'm going to use that from now on, mm-hmm. Joe. And especially too, like the more that CrossFit can be mentioned in or involved in or seen alongside these larger, more endemic sports, the the more exposure we get, right? Like the more people might look up to Tyson and walk into an affiliate one day or explore the affiliate in their town that they never really thought could be for them. Also more proof positive that CrossFitters can do anything. And so we're breaking down barriers and smashing stereotypes that you can't use this type of training methodology to benefit anything and everything that you're doing in your entire life. So it is really solid to see. It is 100% correct. It's great to see CrossFit being talked about in the framework of another professional sport. So it's great yeah. to see that. Yeah. 
But you're really and not just another niche sport too. Like I think we see CrossFit and weightlifting all the time, or we see sure, CrossFit some UFC. other very niche sports. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. You are crushing the segues here today because you're mentioning <laughs> the functionality of CrossFit outside of the gym and to do other things. We wrote a story highlighting a study that was done at the University of Copenhagen as we shift gears to the affiliate side of things and the community. This study revealed, wait for it, that fit people tend to be lazy outside of the gym. First of all, I feel attacked, Joe. <laughs> what are you talking about? That was the result of the study. Um, it was published in an academic journal, a peer-reviewed academic journal, that individuals who follow a structured training program tend to conserve more energy outside of the gym, which may seem kind of like a no-brainer in some ways. You crush yourself in the gym, and then you've earned your couch time after. Some really interesting conversation came out of the, the article on social media, and there was kind of a, a bit of a divide between men and women where some women were saying, let's, let's talk to some CrossFit moms about mm. how lazy they're able to be outside of the gym and, and so on. What do you think, Nikki? Probably goes by stages of life, right? I don't think you'll find a toddler parent who gets to be lazy at any point in time. So you're running around after your kid. Maybe that changes once your kids are older and driving themselves around and you don't have to be the chauffeur anymore. And you don't have to hover over them the way I hover, hover mother over here, <laughs> fully admitting. But, but I do think that's interesting. I also, I'm a little curious to understand the nuances of what quote unquote lazy outside the gym or what that real conservation of energy looks like, because I would still, I would still guess, not a scientist, have not, have not done this study, but I would still guess that like CrossFitters outside the gym maybe would tend to be more active than say the average American who isn't working out at all. So right, yeah. we might be more inclined to go on a hike on a weekend or something, whereas someone who isn't at all inclined to do physical activity wouldn't have that at the sure. top of their to-do list. But uh, maybe if you're just doing straight apples to apples, like you have 24 hours in one day or maybe 14 hours a week or whatever it may be, and you're only working out for one of those hours, what are you doing in mm -hmm. the other hours? Mm -hmm. I can see how that might be, sure. especially during the open. I'm not going to do anything because <laughs> I got to go crush a seven minute am <laughs> uh, in the evening. Right. So yeah, I, well, I would take it with a grain of salt is all I'm saying. Yeah, no. And I, and I think that the, the, that was how we took it as well. But, and, and I think that there is a difference between elite level athletes who are training for a living and, and those of us who are just getting our workout in mm -hmm. and then going about our lives. In my case, chauffeuring two 13 year olds around to basketball you know, games, volleyball games, you know. and all these sorts of things. And then all of the after school, other after school activities. So, yeah, there's not a lot of really sitting unless you're going to count sitting in the parking lot waiting for mm -hmm. volleyball practice to end. But it was a cool, it was a cool story and worth a conversation. One more. So, last time we talked about Nike breaking into the equipment, fitness equipment space with barbells and plates and squat racks and benches and things like that. We have not published this article yet, but we will be later this week publishing a piece about Nike's attempt to also break into the boutique fitness space hmm. as well. Just in, in a few pilot locations right now around Southern California, some discussion of bringing uh, opening one or two in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> but these are either, they're called Nike Studios, or Nike okay. running studios. So one is a kind of a running training runners and the other is more of what we would think of as, as a functional fitness. So this is just getting started and there are opportunities in those locations to become founding members at some of these gyms. Obviously these are not CrossFit affiliates, but Nike is making, making some sort of a, a play here. So it's worth paying mm -hmm. attention to both as an affiliate owner, but people interested in the functional fitness space. What's interesting to me, like I think for for us within our microcosm of the CrossFit world, it seems like they're breaking into our space. It's yeah. our space. What are you doing? <laughs> but I do think that there is an element of what Nike is doing that is very GPP because boot camps are really, really yeah. popular and because functional fitness in and of itself outside of just the CrossFit world is really, really popular. And things like high rocks are getting more and more popular and they're all kind of fringe CrossFit, right? We share a lot of movements. We yeah. share a lot of equipment. Mm -hmm. So I do see it as a way for them to 
they see us as a market and they know that we're available for the purchasing, so to speak. And so that's a part of it. But I also think that when I hear about these Nike studios opening, I also hear them taking on like Peloton and taking on like Les Mills and taking on like these larger group fitness classes that people might not necessarily associate one to one with CrossFit Mm -hmm. as much as they are looking at like a Barry's boot camp and something along those lines. Because those types of programs sometimes can and will use barbells and plates and dumbbells sure. and and all these things, kettlebells. So I think this is an opportunity for them to hit all of those people all at once. Not going to make half the equipment. They're Nike. They're going to make all the equipment. Yeah. But I don't, yeah. I don't necessarily think it's just them coming for our CrossFit or weightlifting or functional fitness space. I think it's them being smart and being like, we can speak to everyone mm-hmm. who's ever done a boot camp. We can speak to everyone who's ever logged onto a system like Peloton or thought about entering yeah. into a Barry's boot camp or even a Gold's gym that has yep. a shitload of Les Mills classes. Oh, yeah. I just what, what that, are they? they call it Gold's Fit or something. <laughs> sure, whatever uh-huh. it may be. I was actually a Les Mills instructor for a while oh, before yeah, I was a CrossFit instructor. So I can speak directly to <laughs> like working with with the general population on on group fitness classes. But every single yeah. gym has them. And so this is probably just another way for them to, yeah. you know, continue on. Truly, I think the trend since COVID, we've realized, has been like people want access to yeah. fitness. Whether or yeah. not they use it, that's <laughs> different. But people want access and Nike wants to sell memberships. Well, I think I, I don't necessarily look at this as something scary. I think it's a it's a sign that CrossFit and functional fitness and and you said, as you said, GPP, uh, it's 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 a healthy market. Nike yeah. wouldn't want to get into a market that was not a a healthy, profitable market. So that that's a, I think it's a good sign. Yeah, I think so too. And those barbells are pretty cool. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. They I just said it. Red cool. one's pretty pretty slick. Yeah, they do look pretty yeah. cool. All right, Nike. All right. Awesome, Joe. There's so much going on right now. Thank you so much for uh, for is. keeping us abreast of everything. I'm most excited to watch the Rogue Invitational oh, uh, and too. to keep up with all of the evaluation that you guys are going to be doing uh, at the Morning Chalk Up this weekend. So if you guys want any more information, be sure to visit the Morning Chalk Up's Instagram page for the latest updates and also their website for the full articles. And we will be back next week on Kettlebells of Cocktails with another edition of the Weekly Buzz. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll chat with you soon.